Rising inflation, rising rates, rising dollar. On the last point, though, I want to throw up this quick chart. Last week was the fifth straight week of gains we had for the US dollar, longest winning streak since 2015. Is that coming to an end now? Because we've all kind of been scratching our heads as to what's prompted this enthusiasm over USD all of a sudden. I think um, one, of the, one of the key things, I guess, which shifted people back into the dollar um, was largely that the European growth story, while the US growth story continued to be quite robust in the first quarter, European growth in particular looked to fade out a little bit, and that's clearly concerned some people. So you saw some rotation back into the dollar. Um, clearly the Fed was continuing to be on a, um, a front foot, continuing to move forward in their um, hiking cycle, um, whereas um, inflation and, and growth disappointed in Europe, and that raised questions around the ECB um, and the timing of the exit from QE. Um, on, on a longer term basis, look, in the short term, um, we do see risks um, around the euro, US dollar cross, um, and the Italian election result um, has clearly raised those risks for us. Um, but in the longer term, um, clearly, the twin deficit situation in the US, um, the very large um, a surplus in Europe, um, and also we expect growth to rebound um, in the second and third quarters. So we think people will eventually rotate back out of the US dollar um, and into, um, into Europe. So we're still uh, very bullish on the euro, US dollar in in the, uh, in the longer term, um, we see it trading around up to the 125 to 130 on a 12-month basis. So, yes, at the moment, clearly, um, it's uh, prudent uh, to be careful about these sort of risks like at the Italian election. But longer term, we think the fundamentals mean a weaker dollar, stronger euro, etc., um, on a 12-month basis. You know, one of the, uh, the statements that moved oil prices overnight was these energy ministers, OPEC energy ministers, are still expecting to go into next month's meeting to talk about an exit strategy. Do you envision that happening, given that there are Venezuelan political concerns, there are Iran concerns over supply? I, I think the, one of the key issues that relates to oil is, firstly, from an oil investor's point of view, the curve is steeply in backwardation. Um, so there are definitely gains to be had by owning oil um, on an index basis here. Um, but as we go into the OPEC meeting, we do expect that um, they will start to um, lift these production curbs. Um, not too much, um, but nonetheless, you could expect more oil out of Saudi Arabia, as well as Russia, for example, and some other OPEC nations. Um, but I think the key here is um, Venezuela and the situation there. Um, if things continue to deteriorate at the pace that they are as we go into the summer, you could see Venezuelan oil uh, dropping out of another half a million barrels. Now, that would see oil move substantially higher from where we are. Um, we target $85 a barrel at UBS. Um, we do think that um, the loss from the Iran sanctions uh, by the US will come to a total of somewhere between 200,000 and 500,000 uh, barrels a day. Um, so consequently, Saudi Arabia, who has been very compliant to the, in fact, overly compliant um, to the, the uh, level of production agreed way back in November um, a couple of years ago, um, we think that that compliance will start to come down. Um, but even if Saudi Arabia produce a bit more, Russia produce a bit more, overall, OPEC is still compliant with the agreement. Um, uh, done in November a couple of years ago. Um, so the market is tighter. Demand remains pretty robust. Um, we are below the five-year average for OECD inventories. So we think the oil market, even with a bit more oil from OPEC, can actually continue to hold up pretty well, largely because these risks of Venezuela, as well as, as um, the US administration has come out quite hard in Iran, we don't think that's fully played out yet. So we still like to own oil here.